Welcome back to Surgeon Tip Clips. Today I am very excited to show you a new attachment for the Bernina L890 Combo Overlocker Cover Stitch Machine. It's the double fold binder attachment and it is so cool and it's got so many nice features on it and there's one in particular that is going to be so helpful for you. I can't wait to show you. I know you're going to love it. Here are the various pieces. This is the double fold binder and you can see it says 36 millimeters, which is the width of the strip that will go through it. There's a little short screw that attaches uh, this to the accessory holder, which is right here. And there are two larger, longer screws that will screw into the cover hem table on the machine. So let's get to the machine and see how these all go together. My machine is set up for a three thread narrow cover stitch. I have my center and right cover stitch needles in and I have my stitch length on 4.0. My differential feed I'm leaving at one and uh, I have like a light pinky red thread in so that you can see how beautifully it stitches against the light gray fabric. Let's put the accessory holder on first. If you're wondering what these little screw holes were for on the cover hem table, now you'll know. These are the two long screws and you always want to make sure to use both of them simply because you don't want the holder to torque when you're stitching with just the one and you could see it possibly could. So we'll put that in and then the second one will secure it and keep it stabilized and I may need to adjust those a little bit. And now we'll put the binder attachment onto that and this will fit multiple attachments. I'm going to slide this in. There's a little bracket I can slide this in and I have the little short screw that will hold this right on here. And I am using, as I said before, the right and center cover stitch needles. So I want the mouth of the binder aligned with those needle indicator ridges right on the toe. And I'm using the clear foot because I thought it would be nice for you to see how the binding is stitched as it's going under the foot. So this is the C27 clear foot. So I'm looking at this um, and this indicator ridge. And I may need to adjust these just a little bit, which you usually do. Now this screw, uh, sometimes if when it comes from the factory, it may be moved up here. And I would not be able to put my foot down without it bumping the front of the binder. I want to back this out a little bit and give myself a little bit of space between the toe of the foot and the mouth of the binder. So I think right about here is good. So I've got all of this set up and next we'll put in our fabric. Before we insert the binding strip, I wanted to show you this other cool feature and it's nice for a couple of reasons. I can swing this attachment out and open the front door without having to detach anything. So if I wanted to change something in here, I could do it without having to start all over again. So let me just close that up. I just wanted to show you that. But there's another nice reason that having this a swing out is that you can insert the binding strip very easily with it. It's not up so close to the toe of the machine that, or toe of the uh, presser foot that you need to really fiddle around with it to get that uh, binding strip under the presser foot. Here is my binding strip and I have cut this a scant inch and a half wide. This is a 36 millimeter binder. You can see the numbering right here. So what I have to do is I am going to insert this into the chute, for lack of a better word, and I'm going to use my tweezers to move this along through the, through the binder. And this is a fairly hefty, I'd say it's a thick t-shirt weight. 
through. And once you see the tip of the binding come out of the mouth of the binder, you can just pull it along with your tweezers. Once you've got it out, you don't need your tweezers anymore. But look, at you can already see the double fold starting to form. So I can swing this back and I have to do, I'm going to pull it straight under my presser foot and a little tip on the binding strip. Don't let it hang off the edge of your sewing surface or table because if you're using a very lightweight knit that's unstable, you can the weight of it hanging off will stretch it out so that you don't want to happen. So I'm bringing this under and I'm kind of eyeballing it at this point to see. I think I'm going to move the binder just a little bit to the right and typically you do have to make a little bit of an adjustment here and there and I may adjust it again. I'm going to uh, test it with the stitching. So let's see where the stitching lands on this. And again, I'm going to support this. I might even just put it and let it hang right over that screw and let that act as a little bit of a um, stop for keeping it in place. But let's test it. And let me move it just a smidge left. I think I went overboard on this. Now I'm going to lift the presser foot, let this binding relax, but you have to remember you're not going to see an instantaneous change in the stitching position because the distance between the front of the binder and the needles is I would say almost two inches. So you have to give it a little bit of time to catch up to that change in the position. And now you can see that stitching closer to where we want it to be. And I think that's probably pretty good. So I'm going to take my neckline and I just have a little sample neckline. So I'm putting this in right side up and I'm kind of letting it bend to the contour of the wall of the binder itself and getting it right in between where those folds are going to form. So let's see if we can get this all squared away. It's really cool because the binder does all of the work basically. And you just want to take your time don't pull or stretch your neckline. You don't want to do that. That's not a good thing. So no daylight between the binder and the neckline. And that scant one and a half inches is really perfect for the width of the strip. Now, I can just swing this back out. I've got it all finished off. I've got a little bit of excess length here on this, but I don't need to keep um, stitching because I've got my neckline covered. So let me just finish this off. And we'll take a look at this. Here's our finished neckline. Now I haven't even pressed this and this is how great this looks. And you can see that the stitching is perfect. It's positioned absolutely where I want it. At the beginning, let's take a look. Here's why I say you want that extra length because I thought the stitching was too far um, to the right. It was a little more centered than I wanted it on the binding. So I adjusted it and it came out and went right along the edge exactly where I wanted it. Let's look at the back side too, and you can see here's the um, chain looper thread, just perfect. And again, not even pressed, not a pucker, no nothing. It's, it's fabulous. So I hope you try it. It does take a little bit of practice, but it's amazing how easy it is to get the hang of this. So go ahead and try it on the project that you have coming up and I hope you love it and send me your questions or comments and I'll be happy to help you if you need any extra tips. Thanks for joining me today. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Tell your friends about it and feel free to share this. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you quickly. Happy sewing and surging and I'll see you again soon.